So, sometimes it's important to do stupid stuff. And sometimes you also can show it if you kind of get away with it. I'm gonna dive too steep actually. Um, I have a compression issue right there. Rip a good chunk of my left wing and I'm still more or less going fine. Ripping that wing at 740 kilometers. And I still can maneuver and correct and snag that LA5F, no problem. And I'm not flipping into uncontrollable spin after this weird roll. So I still can go for the Spitfire. Now, I, excuse the aim, I was still in my head with 400 meters conversions, but I had 600. And um, yeah, that one kills him. But again, a beer for the nine, a focke wolf probably would rather fight survival or kiss already the ground rather than, you know, sitting on the tail of something, correcting uh, more or less without any issues and then uh, at the end more or less flattening the guy. T18B, no problem for that far power. Two MG151s and one 30mm. But all good things must come to an end, but hey, after a wing rip, three kills, that's good. That's really good. I like it. Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. So today I want to talk about the BV-155B1, which is an absolute absurdity of a plane. So there is so much to talk about, I try to go bit by bit. First of all, battle rating 3.7 German Premium Interceptor of rank 3, being part of the new battle pass and it's the free vehicle actually. And as such, I think it's a nice pickup. And uh, let's talk about the looks first. So this is a, a real Frankenstein's monster. We have longer wings than the Tau 152 H1. And then we have also those side pipes and the four bladed prop from the Focke Wolf 190C. The cockpit looks a bit like from a BF 109, but the tail section reminded me a bit more of the ME 262A1. And overall the plane at very first, it reminded me of the ME262, except that the wings were stretched and uh, the turbines, the jet turbines, were flattened. But those are then the very insanely big oil radiators. And uh, then the fuselage was really on a diet. So it's an absolute <laughs> absurdity of a plane. I personally like it, but I understand absolutely people that say it's it's not what they really like look wise so yeah longer wings than the tau 152 h1 very big oil radiators four bladed engine uh not engine prop and a very powerful engine indeed uh, yeah that's due to the praised high altitude performance uh, according to the dev block and the maximum altitude is 17 kilometers not seven 17 kilometers and there it's rated with uh, close to 700 kilometers per hour at least at 15 and a half kilometers but the practice uh, the practice shows that nobody's gonna fight even close to this altitude so this is not what you would what want to experience in air rb so at lower altitude, the plane doesn't really pick up speed. The plane doesn't really accelerate all that much. The top speed isn't great. So uh, difficult. Then let's talk about the armor name. So we have no gun pods, we have no bombs, and we have no rockets. In the quote-unquote wing routes, we have one 20mm MG151 with 200 rounds each. However, they are still very far apart because the wings are just so absurdly wide. And then in the center, we have a MK108 30mm with 75 rounds. Now, overall in this gameplay, you see me doing two things. First of all, I always flew with 30 minutes of fuel, which I would not recommend. I would recommend 20 or even less because the matches just don't uh, take that long and you don't need that much fuel. It just weighs you down. 
So keep that in mind. That's the performance with 30 minutes of fuel. And also my convergence was set to 600 meters and I always had in the back of my head 400. And it's been a very long time since I actually played props in RRB. So forgive my aim here. And yet I got this performance out of the plane. And uh, yeah, dueling XP50s that are absolutely overconfident and throwing away all their advantages. And you see, despite the absurdly long wings, the roll rate isn't shockingly bad, let's put it that way. I think it's, it's adequate to surprisingly good for what they are. I'm not claiming that it's a turning monster, but it's just good enough. Yeah, uh, so much for my aim nearly ramming the wreck there but yet yet you know taking apart xp50s like this is just fantastic and i think that when you have some speed and you know how to use the combat flaps you can do those really weird loops because again you have so much lift because of your absurdly large wings now I would love to play it differently and I would love to go to altitude and then boom and zoom with this but there are two things that uh, speak against it first of all while you have an air spawn uh, the r climbing rate is actually so bad that you just get out climbed by your teammates and by the time you reach altitude with side climbing nobody's left to be killed because the rest of your team is just rocking through the entire enemy team in a couple of seconds again take much less fuel so you have to be in the right way just aggressive enough and just patient enough so here we can see that uh, there is this f4f and this is what i love about german teams i bait this guy and <laughs> watch this gone <laughs> this is um i had fun playing this thing maybe it was because low tier maybe because you know i have a half decent plane and yeah um there is lots and lots of footage again i was hesitating quite a bit going into a turning with uh, enemy uh, teammates enemy teammates uh with enemies without any teammates that's what i tried to say with teams the german furball gets so much more deadly it's absolutely hilarious now again the performance is not perfect and uh, maybe the spitfire would beat me but there is obviously a teammate keeping him occupied and then i just can plan my attack run and just flatten this guy beautiful just beautiful so bv 155 b1 i think uh, this is where it all comes together this XP50 was so overconfident and threw away so much energy, couldn't resist to go into a turn and didn't expect me to turn into him that quickly with that low speed and that low energy. Um, we will see how this comes together in the future when people will adopt. Then it might be a different picture. Again, I expect Gaijin to raise the battle rating, somehow to nerf the survivability or performance of the plane and at the same time people learning that this is actually a plane you have to watch out for and then an xp50 might not do those silly maneuvers again i'm not the world's greatest pilot here uh, mainly because i'm out of uh, practice to be honest but this this plane this plane felt cool it felt fun uh, and i have to admit it surprised me so is this worth the battle pass? Well, let's have a quick look at the modifiers and yeah, it's rank three. So uh, the grinding for planes effectively stops at rank four and we have, uh, I think also cheaper premiums at lower tier or at the same, at the same tier. So civil line modifier is 1.45. That's not too great. And the RP modifier is 1.42. Now it depends then obviously if you have a premium account or not, but I think that it will get you civil lines and RP consistently. And uh, that's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Uh, what your experience in fighting 
with it and against it is have you looked for this plane or is it a complete surprise out of the blue for you pun intended so you know how to like you know how to subscribe if you want to see more and as usual we will see each other on the waves on the battlefields and in the skies of war thunder